I'll take attendance without Joyce um, for the record. Now, um, I will um, move, uh, I'll, I'll actually, Fred, I'll, I'll listen to a motion on minutes. I move we approve the minutes from the meeting of April 13th. Uh, I will second. All those in favor, Fred? Yes. Me, yes. So be it. Uh, unanimous. Vendor and payroll warrants. Um, I signed them today. And if anyone wants to tell me I shouldn't have signed them, uh, but I signed them today. Public comment. Things that are not on the agenda that people want to discuss. Anybody? Who do we have here? I'm going to change my view here. So I'm Amy. Oh, okay. Just Keith. All right. Um, <clears throat> COVID-19 policy. Um, Brian, you want to give us anything new? Nope. Status quo. I will admit to being anxious about the uptick. And I say that only because it seems we start to take action after it becomes a crisis as opposed to taking action so that we prevent a crisis. But, um, you know, there, there have been incidents I've, I've been hearing about them. And I knew a couple of people who were, who actually were in the hospital. So do not let anyone tell you that people do not go to the hospital with the current variant because they are either delusional or lying to you. It may not be as frequent, but it does happen. So get your boosters, get your boosters. I'm a month away from my second boost. I got mine last week. I have no problem. I don't, it, it's, don't understand it. Mumps, measles, rubella, tetanus. No one has a beef. Anyway. Um, uh, what can we do? Uh, well, we can do the first old business. Uh, apparently, um, John Baronis is uh, withdrawing his petition uh, tell me a, bit, a little bit about that, Brian. Um, so this was a petition that was sent to the select board a couple months ago. Um, the request was to reduce the, the setbacks for um, solar facilities in town from 100, right now it's 100 feet from all sides. Um, and the request was, um, I think it was 50 in the front yard and then 20 on the other sides. Um, I think that's what it was. Um, planning board held a public hearing. The planning board was not in favor of those proposed changes um, and based on the unfavorable report of the planning board, the applicant has decided to withdraw that request. Okay, so no more action needed on that end. Um, Joyce, you are just in time. I know you didn't wanna talk about this, but you are mm -hmm. just in time to discuss um, hybrid vehicles for the police force. We received a, an update uh, from Jim, having done his research slash due diligence. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'm you know, curious about feedback that, that, that you know, Jim, you want to give us a, 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 a summary of, of the findings you had, and then we'll let yeah. Yeah. other people comment? Sure. sure. Yeah, I can, I can, I can give you the, the bulleted version of it. Um, so the, the main thing right now <clears throat> is that there's no pursuit rated vehicle option available. They're not, they're not offering a dedicated um, vehicle for police um, frontline vehicles. That's, that's the key thing. Uh, so pursuit rated vehicles are they're rated by the, the manufacturers and they include the things like the um, up, Upfitted suspensions, larger brakes, reinforced chassis, a lot of things like that that are that go into dedicated police vehicles. So that's the that's the first thing. Um, another major concern is we had a vendors meeting uh, a couple of weeks ago now, our Mass Chiefs vendor meeting where all the main vendors come out, and this was a a big meeting because there's a lot of discussion about this, and the, all of the major vendors were there and. The, I guess the, the ultimate finding is that <clears throat> there's the equipment just isn't available yet. The, the center consoles that hold our light control units and radios and all that stuff are um, rifle racks, the cages, prisoner transport cages, um, all of these things, mobile data terminal, 
um, mounting systems, they, they don't have dedicated uh, equipment for these vehicles yet. Um, that's something that's being worked on, emergency light bars, all of, all of the different things that go into the, the police vehicles. Um, let's see. So what, what we've been finding, and I've made some phone calls, talked to the, the manufacturer, um, MHQ, that's our local manufacturer who deals with the state bid vehicles. Um, and the vehicles that they're selling and the vehicles, and I've reached out to some departments that, that are using these vehicles, and these vehicles are being used as what we'd call a secondary, secondary to um, main patrol use, which secondary being ad administrative vehicles um, for chiefs or um, parking enforcement, things of that nature. Um, there is a department that, <clears throat> that I talked talk to, the Topsfield PD. Um, they have their cruiser that they're using. That cruiser is, they have five cruisers on a road at a time. So they, they are using that cruiser, the electric vehicle that they've got now as kind of a test model where they're testing it out. Um, but it has very limited use because they can't transport prisoners. They do some traffic enforcement, but they, they have other vehicles on the road that have equipment available if it's needed. And they have the prisoner transport um, cages if, if they need them as well. So they won't use the car if it's the only one on the vehicle, if it's the only vehicle on the road. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, one of the other issues that came up was the lack of availabil availability. So as an example, the, the Mach-E, that's the one that's being tested. Um, it was tested by Michigan State Police and some departments are purchasing them uh, to test out. They're not accepting any more orders for 2022. And when the orders do come out for 2023, later this year, um, if, if we did look to purchase a vehicle, we're looking at about 30 to 40 weeks turnaround before we can even get the vehicle. And again, we're running into the issue with no equipment available to put into the vehicle. Um, they gave me an example as a, one of the mach -E's that was ordered as a chief's vehicle, which uh, has very, very limited stuff. They, they were able to get a, a couple of aftermarket lights that they put in it just to have lights in it with a toggle switch, no consoles, no, no cages, no other equipment in a chief's vehicle. And that order came in at $72,000 for the vehicle. Uh, da, 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 da. Why so high on that one? Because of demand? Um, well, there's, so the mach -E has three different models. Um, they went with the, the GT model, that's their highest performance model. Um, so that has the, the most pickup, the most top, the highest top speed, the longest battery life, that kind of thing. And the, the vehicle itself, itself started around 65 to, I, I don't know exactly what it was, but 65 to 70,000 just for the vehicle. And then the, the little bit of equipment that they put into it was the, uh, the additional costs. So um, the, the price of the vehicle, and again, this isn't the police rated vehicle. This is just the highest rated vehicle that they have so far. That's their so-called sport version. Um, that's, that's the highest price vehicle right now that they have. <clears throat> okay. Just looking at the, you know, the hybrid, some numbers that they came up with from the manufacturer and, you know, take it for what it's worth. Um, just looking at what we could get for, for savings, for um, fuel savings and, and efficiency and the, the impact on the, um, the environment. The manufacturer reports that there's a 40% reduction in fuel costs when compared to um, the current police utility vehicle that's on the, on the market that we're currently mm -hmm. using in our department. So comparing it to that, which is, essentially the same model, just the hybrid version. Um, they're, they're talking about a 41% reduction in fuel costs and the su substantial uh, environmental impact. Can, can you say more like what this, I don't think I have any information about this hybrid in front of me, um, but maybe, so maybe before we go to that, um, all of these things that you mentioned in here, um, the things like prisoner cages, consoles for radio switches, light sirens, 
emergency lights, mobile data terminal, docking rifle racks, storage cabinets. Do we have those in our vehicles right now? Do we have all of those things in our vehicles now? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's and going that. going with a hybrid vehicle, we would have the same storage um, space. And we'd have the options for that equipment. Um, an additional thing with the electric vehicles, these are crossover vehicles or sedans. So they have about half the storage space that we have currently in our in our vehicles. So that's that's a concern as well. In addition to the the actual space where the officer sits, mm -hmm. uh, shoulder room, head room, leg room, that kind of thing. Okay. I, I, can I ask a quick question? I don't understand. I mean, I've been in, in you know a fair number of electric vehicles. Some <clears throat> have the same internal dimensions as a non-electric vehicle does. Um, sitting there, you would not be able to tell the difference. Why are the internal things, the, the cage, the gun rack, et cetera, why are they different specs? And maybe there's a good reason. I just don't understand. So when you put in, so as an example, for the prisoner cage, for the utility vehicles, there's actually two cages, one that sits behind the driver and passenger seat, and then one that separates the compartment area for the storage that's further in the back. Um, so those take up space. So that takes up leg room because um, you can't put the seat as far back as you would if the cage wasn't in there. Um, and the consoles, all of the other equipment, the consoles, the rifle racks, all of those sit right between the, the, the driver and passenger seat. So it actually pushes into the seats. So the where the seatbelt mount would be, the seatbelt latch. Um, they actually make, in the, in the cruisers, they make a, I guess it's a rubberized thing on the back of that because it, it spends so much time rubbing against that center console that they had to reinforce the, the actual buckle because it's, it closes the space in even more. Um, and you, you got to look at the fact that we're wearing um, bulletproof vests, duty belts that have guns and tasers and all of this stuff on them as well as other, you know, other things, radios that we have on our belt as well. So, so have, adding less space, um, when we had the sedans, we always had problems with the seat belts breaking and the seats wearing out um, because of the, the equipment rubbing into them. Even when we, we had the sedans that were police vehicles, uh, because we sometimes we kept those for six or, or seven years, um, they, they would just wear out after time because of all the equipment that that's there. So, so that's, that's where you get the, the reduction in space, so to speak, because you have um, all of those things in addition to other equipment that you have, your duty bag, which has all of your you know, personal stuff that you would need for your shifts, your gloves, your citation book, you know, your paperwork, your manuals, all the things that you need in there as well. So that's in your front seat with you. Um, we, we've had issues with cup holders because Everybody wants to have a cup holder, but we barely have the space to put a cup holder in. Um, so that's always a, a kind of a bone of contention, whether or not we get a cup holder. So it, it really comes down to inches that, that matter in these vehicles. And, and there really are fewer inches in, term, in, terms of, in, in terms of cubic feet inside of, of high, uh, an electric vehicle versus non-electric vehicle? Yes. There is. If, if you compare okay. them, you look at yeah. you look at them together, because the the Mach E is that's the the Ford version of it. That's that's a crossover vehicle. So we have a utility which is the next size up. So it's a smaller vehicle. So it has I think it has three. I'm trying to remember the numbers off the top of my head. In the back compartment area, I think there was five. I want to say five or six cubic feet less space than in the utility vehicle. And then they have under the hood where the engine would normally be. Um, a lot of people think that there's additional storage under there. Um, but when you, when you actually look at the, the vehicle, when you raise it up, again, because it's not a dedicated police vehicle, they make these with like a, a little compartment that they, they kind of bill it as a cooler. It's got holes in the bottom of it. So you could put ice in it and put, you know, if you go on a, you know, a day trip or something like that, you could fill it as a, as a cooler. So that's about the size of the storage space under the, under the hood. So there's, yeah. there's a lot of reduced, 
reduce space as far as as far as storage goes well as far as i mean it depends on what your what the question means john they could take that same police car same size same internal dimensions and just make it an electric car that's the thing that they haven't done yet they haven't taken an actual police car and just swap out the engine for a motor and batteries because if they do that the car is the same size everything else is the same size so it sounds like it, it's um not at the it's not at the point where uh, the cars that are out there, like no, like nobody's done like what would be the the probably the smart thing to do, which is take a police car that everybody likes and just make it into an electric vehicle. That sounds like that that hasn't been done yet, and I find that hard to believe given the market, but maybe like in one year. So I I kind of like uh, I like the idea of getting on the list. And seeing if we can make do for one more year, that's one thing we should consider. But the, the thing I like about the hybrid is that the hybrid, and the, one of the reasons why we use so much fuel is because you keep the engine running all the time. And that's why the engine wears out and the hybrid addresses that. And that's why, they, that's why you get 40% fuel savings is because during the times when you're not moving and you still need to have the vehicle on, you've got batteries to run. So I guess one other question is, are there pluggable hybrids where you like the, for example, they make them now where the first 40 miles is all electric and you can keep plugging it in and charging it. Um, is pluggable hybrid an option on that hybrid? Not that I'm aware of, not for the, not for the utility, not for the utility vehicle. It's just, it's just one option. And the, the other thing to think about too, the other thing to consider, and we consider this with the utility vehicles as well, when, when they first started coming out, um, we actually purchased another cruiser before we got the utility vehicles, uh, because especially with police vehicles, because you can you could test them for a week on a track and that's that's great. But until you sit in it for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week for years at a time, you don't you don't really get the full test out of the vehicle. You don't get to work out all the kinks, all the bugs, and there, there's always kinks and bugs. And if you just take a vehicle and then you just put a, electric motors in that, and then you, you say, now we've got an electric vehicle. I, I don't want our first vehicle that we purchased that's an electric vehicle, the one that just came out, if that's our only vehicle that we have on the road. We don't have, I mean, we have another cruiser, but it's not fully marked, so on and so forth. But I don't want that first one to be the the test dummy, if you will, to work mm -hmm. out all those kinks and all those bugs. I somehow doubt that we're going to be first in line on that. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. If we get on the list for the first one that comes out, would, if that's next year or the year after. Yeah. But know, but honestly, that's what a lot of car companies are doing. The ones that are really dedicated to turning their fleets all electric, they're just taking the Volkswagen Golf and they're taking out the engine and they're putting in a motor and then fitting the batteries in and leaving the rest of the car that people like the way it is. So I'd actually be much happier if somebody took a police car that's been well tested and everybody likes the features that are in it and just swap out the engine for a motor. I mean, that's actually gets you much closer to where you ultimately want to be. And I think, I think that's ultimately what they're looking. That, that's ultimately what they're looking at. But they have, they they read off. I mean, there's there's a whole punch list of things. They're 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 having weekly meetings with engineers to discuss these things because it's not just as simple and as just swapping stuff out, putting batteries in it, and off you go. Um, you, you're adding oh, oh, weight. Oh, I understand you're adding that. Clearance. Yeah. You don't have yeah. you don't have armor around the batteries in case something happens, a collision or you know, no no gunshot but the, or something the, like that. So there's the many things that they will. look at. I'm sorry. Yeah, the police vehicle will have that, though. Yeah, so, that that's the stuff they're trying to work out. That's yeah. the stuff they're trying to work through. So, with how about this, <clears throat> Jim? What is your and I and dare I ask this because you know I, I'm I'm not one who likes to make a lot of capital purchases on any with any regularity. But 
on the long-term capital schedule, after the current one you are looking to obtain, what's the next car? And what's the next, the timeline for the next car? Yeah. Well, the next one would be, if, if we didn't purchase the third vehicle, um, the next one to get replaced would be the vehicle that I primarily use, the unmarked car. That would be the next one that gets replaced. No, and it's probably going to be two years from what now. Year? Two what years, year? Two years. Two years from now. So, okay. So, I don't FY25. Know FY25. In front of me, but. FY25. FY25. Joyce and Fred, how would you guys feel about this? Because I, I do see the benefits of, 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 the, of the hybrid, certainly, um, just from gas savings alone, because I've never looked at, the, at what the gas budget is for the police station, for the police department, but I, I got to believe it's pretty sizable. What if we purchased a hybrid this time around and simultaneously got on the list because we want to show demand? I'm guessing these cars aren't made because no one's raising a fuss, but if the, if the demand goes up, Someone's going to say, oh, I can make money. So what if we simultaneously got put, up, put, put ourselves on a list for the specs that we are looking for so that we can be near the front of the line in two years when we need another vehicle and hopefully the industry has learned, has a year under their belt of more and more of the EV chase vehicles coming online. I, I, I'm just throwing it out as an option. I, I, I think that's a great idea. And <clears throat> you said that the next vehicle would be your vehicle, so it wouldn't be the frontline vehicle anyway. Well, it is a frontline vehicle. It's just the difference between the two is my my cruiser, the one that I call yep. mine, is it's not marked. It's not lettered, and it doesn't have a light bar on the top. It has lights inside. It has a prisoner cage. It has all the same stuff the other car has. It just it's just not lettered. That's the only that's the only difference between the two. It's the same vehicle. One I, one's I, I would agree though. I think we should get get on whatever list there is to mm -hmm. order that. And could you live for let's say a year with an electric vehicle that didn't have all of that as your quote your car? With just just having one car vehicle with that equipment i would say no just because it's i'm i'm not an administrative chief i'm a working chief so i make arrests i transport people we we respond to call i respond to okay. calls just like um, everybody else does yeah so I, I would just asking yeah and that's kind of that's kind of my recommendation now is to look at this you know go with the hybrid vehicle and then look at you know, watch this closely. And when that, that option becomes available, hopefully within, within the next two years, um, and then we can get that. I mean, I wouldn't even mind testing out that even if it was the first one for, for the chief's car, if you will, yeah. because that gets used less. The other car gets used twice as much as, as my car gets used. So um, we, we, we wouldn't be putting as much wear and tear on it. So it, that could be a vehicle that, that we could use to, to kind of test it out to see if it's, if it's going to work for us. I, I absolutely think we should get ourselves on whatever list there is. I and mean, these, these things usually require a minimal deposit. And worst case is we move ourselves down the list. If it's, and, you know, and sometimes they don't require a deposit. Yeah, they don't. And sometimes they, they don't. But They don't, yeah. Yeah, but... If there's yeah. a deposit, it'll be like a hundred, two hundred dollars, something like that. Not a yeah. There, there wouldn't be any. There okay. wouldn't be any deposit because it's it, we we go off the state bid for um for Massachusetts. So like for the the hybrid vehicle, if if we decide to go for a hybrid vehicle right now, and knowing that we're still a little bit of ways away from um, voting a town meeting to to allocate the funds for this, I could still call them up tomorrow and say, yeah, go ahead and order it. Because if something happens and we don't raise the money at town meeting or they don't vote for it, they can just put that back on the lot and they'll sell it tomorrow. You know, that, so right. that's usually what we do. So we don't have to wait that, that long lag mm -hmm. time. As I, I would tell them tomorrow, yep, go ahead and set one aside for us. And we'll, we'll let you know when we're going to make the purchase and they can get everything they need, all the equipment they need. Because if they don't put it in that car, they're going to put it in a different car. So for them one car like that, it, it, it doesn't make much of a difference to them 
they'll they'll let us order it tomorrow. They just won't do the paperwork till after July first. So let's get on the list. Let's let's get a yeah. hybrid part this year. Right. Okay. Do our I part. mean a hybrid is a substantial improvement. Right. Over what we've got now. My understanding, and maybe uh, I don't know if I'm going to have the timing right, is that um, we sort of buy police cruisers like every two to three years, and we kind of keep the newest two are like really police vehicles and the oldest third one is mostly kept around in case we need it because one of the others goes out of service and maybe people use that when they're doing um you know traffic around the comcast yeah. poles or something like that um so if we don't uh, i you're saying it's on a two-year horizon for the next one i don't know that it's every two years we keep buying one but it's something like on a two to three year basis and I think we're going to find that with the hybrid, we're not going to wear it out as quickly right. on account of we're not going to be running the engine all the time. And uh, and I think we, we can re-examine the timeline in the long run. But I think it's, you know, the optimist in me says that there's so much has changed in electric vehicles, vehicles in the last two years that when we're looking two years from now, yeah. like we may find something that is um, far more suitable and something that's going to last us 10 years so and, and they, i think if joyce you and john agree ask the chief really keep on top of the progress on this and if, you know if there are developments report back to us what's available and what a timeline might be so we can, so we are better informed about what what the options are yeah, most definitely and just i was i was going to talk with joyce just because she's a liaison, I was going to talk offline, but you you brought it up so we could mention it. I've had some um, conversations with Hannah, and we're actually looking at the possibility of of maybe instead of transitioning our our old vehicle down to a detail car, let's possibly explore an electric vehicle that we could use for details or for the highway department could use it or the town administrator could use it if he went to a training. We could put a couple of lights in it and then you know we could use it on a detail if it's if it's ordered for that um but to have a kind of a a town vehicle if you will a town electric vehicle so we're mm -hmm. exploring those options i know right. Anna's working on the okay. yeah it, it, well it sounds like we're inventing a, a a problem for an electric vehicle to solve there in a way right a, electric vehicle you want it to be the thing that you're actually traveling the miles on so that you're displacing gasoline that you otherwise wouldn't um and, and, use. Right. so and, I, I i guess i'm not i'm not as i i'll, I'll keep my mind open about that yeah. but uh, off the top of my yeah, head we'll, we'll talk more details about you're not moving right you drive right. yeah but it's, I, it's idling for, but it's idling for the entire day it's sitting there burning gas for the entire day why does it have to idle at a when you're just running traffic you're not going to jump in the car and chase are you no but we have lights on we have the radio on the, the battery will die if we if we just don't let it run so it, it typically runs for the entire the entire detail and yeah. a lot of times you're moving if we're out on five and ten you're moving you're moving up to the next pole you're moving up to oh, the okay. next location and it's, so it's not going to be miles but you will save gasoline Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because of that. Okay. And, and, you know, this, this might be mission creep for the conversation, but since you brought it up, Jim, in terms of details, we all know, and I'm, I'm well aware that <clears throat> the organization that needs the detail pays for the um, officer. Who's paying for the gas? Who's paying for the wear and tear on that car? So if that it, on all the time. Yeah. Who's paying for that. So, so we have a cruiser detail fund or cruiser detail account. Any repairs or anything that needs to be done to that car comes out of that cruiser detail account. That cruiser detail account is funded by the vendor who pays for that car to be on okay. a detail. We get $10 per hour for that car to be out on a detail. But does it, does part of that, for instance, I'll give you an example when, you know, if, 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 you're, a, if you're an employee who gets reimbursed at 51 cents a mile, whatever it is, mm -hmm. Um, if you're smart, you don't pay for your hard costs and then use the rest for your personal slush fund. 
you put some of that away and it goes and it goes towards the purchase of your next vehicle because your vehicle is going to wear down more quickly than were it not being used for whatever that work purpose is. So I would like to strongly urge that part of that deep quote unquote detail fund is set aside. And if, and if, the, and if the fee has to go up accordingly to pay to, because of the, 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 the more rapid replacement realities, then part of that should help offset the cost of a new vehicle. Yeah, I guess that could be explored. Yeah, I mean, it's we're we're not using it. We're it's it's essentially a, a detail car. So that vehicle, we're not we're not working to replace that with something. I know it, it's going to get replaced with the the oldest car in the fleet at some point, anyways. But it's not like a a frontline cruiser that that's making money that you can put some of that aside to replace that cruiser eventually. These cars either get auctioned for a couple hundred dollars or they just get towed away yeah. you know, when, when it's the end of their life. It just strikes me that there is a cost at some level to the town for, for the detail. Yeah. Piece. It just, it, it has to at some level. But again, that's right. Different... Especially if we're paying for the gas on that. Um, and the, if the gas is not coming out of the detail fund, then that is... Um, that is something to think about um, to make sure that 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 sort of the detail car is really paying for itself. Um, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm yeah I'm I'm trying to keep an open mind about the yeah. replacing that vehicle with some uh, lower cost electric vehicle. Um, yeah, that, that was the whole we, reasoning behind if, it. If the economics, if you know, if it seems economically feasible, then I, I think, think if we if we can get it, you know. A firm proposal on that with cost figures and right. operating and, expenses, and you know what it will save and what it will cost. It's right. certainly worth considering. And yeah. and and you know how much could we get for that that car that we might otherwise just have towed away, right? Yeah, well, if exactly. it's because it'll be newer, right? It, we won't have waited fifteen years to tow it away. Exactly. Yeah. So do I want to? So dare I ask for a motion about the concept around the the hybrid and then the. Uh, electric on 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 a on a list. Um, not there yet. Well, I, uh, what do we need to basically vote whether to support the the um, the motion on town floor, right? So, um, and that's part of our going through the warrant. So, it's uh, does the um, I have the the thing here. Does the act is it like say a hybrid vehicle or anything? Is that specified in the warrant article, or does that not need to be specified? Because Jim knows that if he comes back without a hybrid vehicle, <laughs> that he will be dealing with me on his next negotiation, right? I'm not. I'm not sure how the wording would, would yeah, be in that, there. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I don't have any objection to it saying hybrid vehicle. It does. It currently does not say hybrid. I think it should. I think people on the town meeting floor should be well aware of what we're what we're overtly trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and especially does, if we it, know does it need to be in the warrant, or can we just, among you know, as a select board, pass a resolution indicating that the next vehicle that the vehicle to be purchased, mm -hmm. if approved it on yeah. town floor, is a hybrid vehicle. Yeah, I would be I would be deferring to Brian on what because do we get a, like another chance at some point to approve the purchase after the town because the town meeting is appropriating the money for something and then is there another step where we approve the purchase? Um, I mean, when you sign the vendor warrants, if, if you oh. theoretically, if you refuse to sign the vendor warrants, then the town could not oh. release che the checks. Oh, and that's going to be for the vehicle, and then his vehicle will get impounded, <laughs> and then it'll be a whole mess. Um, yeah. Okay, so there are other mechanisms to enforce that this is a hybrid vehicle, and it means I have to pay better attention to the vendor warrants. But, but that, people, uh, you, if I recall, it's people, never been specified in the past what vehicle is going to be purchased. Right. It doesn't. Just because it the, hasn't the trust is the trust is there that we have these discussions and then yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to buy the equipment that is necessary yeah. for the department. I'm I'm going to go back to publicity. 
just because it hasn't been done in the past doesn't mean it shouldn't have been done in the past or it's not a good idea moving forward in the new in 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 new world scenarios yeah that being said i also believe that people pay attention to those warrant articles with a fine tooth comb much more than they pay attention to anything else we do mm -hmm. and so if we can demonstrate and if we can get town townwide understanding this is important we are mm -hmm. we're leading by example and hopefully more people will then go and buy electric vehicles and hybrids and do other things and and i just think it's important for people to know what we're trying to accomplish i i agree i've got a for brian a practical question the finance committee has already approved will they have to come back and approve a differently worded warrant no in, in my opinion the finance committee approves the amounts okay yeah, I think um, we don't get to we, say what kind of car we buy. Okay, so when we get to that part of the meeting, we're gonna um, we will we'll take care of the actual voting on it. But it sounds like we have a consensus, and when we get to that part of the meeting, we're gonna vote to support that. We don't get to appropriate, right? <laughs> but right. we can. We, we get to we recommend. Think. We get to recommend. Right, and, and you control the the language of the Warren articles. Yeah. Okay. Then we'll work on the language when we get to that part of the meeting tonight. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And if I can just add one quick thing on this, mostly for Hannah, which, and I'm sure you're well on top of this, but just for the record to make sure that we've got the charging infrastructure or the process <laughs> moving for the, pro for the charging infrastructure so that when we get this eventual electric vehicle, the charging stations will be in place at that point. Yep, the ball is already rolling on that. Just making sure, thanks. Okay, so um, next article, next, not an article, next item on the agenda is um, uh, the warrant, the, the, the budgets and warrants for town meeting. Yep. So the finance committee had their, I need some wood to knock on, final meeting um for uh fiscal year 2023 um and they approved the budget last night can we get this um, bigger phone yeah thank you yep um it is what they made no changes last night so this is what was sent out um to the board the finance committee and the board um it's it includes the three percent cola and it includes the other personnel recommendations. So once the finance committee votes on those those various changes, then I go through and I make the uh, various adjustments to the, the different budgets that need to be made. Um, so um, this is it. I don't know if there's any specific questions. I don't know if we need to go line by line. Um, yeah, to, to me, the only question at this point is, um do we want to uh do anything about the, the difference between the personnel committee's recommendation for colas and the finance committee's final vote um that's the to me that's the only question that remains i i think everything else has, has been gone over with a fine tooth comb i it was honestly when um when paul was was saying yesterday that they should raise the water rates. It was all I could do from blurting out. <laughs> but if we pay more for water, we'll get more water, won't we? <laughs> Honestly, I, I just I just could not. I, I just almost uh, exploded. But it didn't explode. I, I thought it would be better for them to just get on with their meeting. Um, Joyce, so I guess this is this is something I kind of I. I don't, I, I, I could go either way. I don't know if this is like the hill to die on. Um, no disrespects to hills or, or people climbing them, but um, uh, the inflation is real. And um, it would be a, a fight. Is it a fight worth having at this point? Is it better to wait till next year and say, hey, inflation has been whatever it is then and make the argument that I just, uh, I just don't know. Um, forgive me, but, and, and maybe I'm in Roger Clemens' famous words, misremembering, 
but I, I could have sworn that we talked about this at the last meeting. And I actually made the point that we did that we should go with this. And, and I thought we had decided, no, that, that you guys wanted to, to, to stick with what the finance committee had recommended. And I said, okay, fine, whatever. But now I hear that. Oh, I didn't think we had decided. No, I think, I think I was on one side, John, you were on another and Joyce was undecided. <laughs> okay. I, I thought That's that accurate. I decided. I thought that I had lost my first and, and we may be in the same <laughs> spot right now. Because I, that, as Joyce was telling me about Hills to die on with all respect to Hills and unfortunately people dying, I don't think this is a fight that is, is worth having. Uh, the, the amount is just not significant enough in the context of the budget or even in the context uh, you know, three quarters of a percent on yeah. people's paychecks while, you know, an extra, you know, whatever it is, you know, $5 a paycheck might be nice. I don't think it's a make or break for anybody. And if we come in, if it turns out that we're very low and that everyone else, every other town and every other employer is giving bigger colas, then we make it up to the next year. Yeah. You know, as we're doing with other pay rates, you know, the personnel committee recommend with other pay rates, when we fall short, when we start lagging behind, we make up for it. Yeah. My only comment, and I agree that the, the it's not the it's not the dollar amount, it's and I don't want to yeah. Subjective always, but it is somewhat insignificant, it seems to me. Um, but again, that's subjective. That being said, the reason that I thought it was potentially important was that people are feeling it. And the reality is people, because of inflation, are getting a pay cut. And the message that we send, the three of us, because I can only speak for or speak with as colleagues for the three of us, we're sending a message that we care a lot about our employees and that they're written and that they're valued. Now they all understand that the dollar amount, uh, but inflation is high. And if we can send a message that we care about the employees, I think, I think that might be worth a fight. At the same time, if we don't do it, we're sending a message to the rest of the taxpayers that we're watching every penny. So it's a question of who you want to send a message to and what message you want to send. Yeah, but you know what, Fred, I'm going to, uh, that's, that's one comment that I hear a lot and I'm going to push back on and I wish I had pushed back on it more over the past few years. Just because you don't embrace a cut does not mean you're not wa still watching every penny. You can watch every penny and be incredibly fiscally responsible without embracing, you know, people have turned the, 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 the mindset of I'm watching every penny because I'm cutting every, every possible ounce out of things. No, you can watch every penny and still sometimes say, yeah, this is okay. Well, we're, we're, we are talking about a 3% increase. So it's not like we're saying no increase. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, at for all. once it's it, higher it, than what the teachers are getting. I just don't, I just don't like the, 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 the PR comment that, the, the, that watching every penny by definition should be trying to cut as opposed to just being responsible. But we're not cutting. We're, we're just not increasing by as much. Hmm. Hmm. And I, again, I it, I, as you say, I, it's about sending a message. The, yeah. the, Brian, if I remember the, the total amount of this three quarters of a percent, we're talking about is $6,000 in the budget. So spread over a full Sounds year about over, right. over our workforce. So it's not, the, not. the money isn't yeah. the important thing. It is, you know, it's a message and who are we sending a message to? And what, yeah. what, what do we want to fight on? Right, right. That, that, to me, that's the, that, that is the, the main thing um, that uh, it's, yeah, I'm not sure it's a fight we can win at this moment, um, but it might be seen as, okay, 
like when you when you stand aside your objection, that gives you a little bit of cred that you can take forward and say, hey, I stood by before. And then later on, you can kind of use that. So um, I guess uh, my in my way of thinking, I, if I stand aside on this, then I live to fight another day, so as to speak. There's another uh, budget next year and we see what inflation looks like then. And we remind people that if the water rates go up, you pay more for water, but you get the same water, right? So, And, and as, as Joyce just said, next year, if we have another argument over COLA, we can remind people that we kept it a little bit lower this year and we can put it back in next year. Yeah. If, if it is called for at that point. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you guys, I, I didn't, okay. I thought we settled it last week. So I, <laughs> okay. No, I, I, I wasn't as clear that it was settled last week, but I, uh, I'm, so I'm glad we brought it up, but we probably don't need to spend any more no. time on it. It sounds like only one of us is, is up for a fight this year. <laughs> so. All right, let's move on then. So do you guys want to vote to recommend this budget? This is what 3%. Vote to recommend the budget. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Uh, Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Okay. Um, one day liquor license application, wine and malt. Uh, I think we should we should just cover the warrant real quick. Yeah. What did I do? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll do select select articles. I could make a select board joke right now, but that wouldn't be funny. I know. There you go. Brian, um, do you want to put up the uh, sort of the budget tool, which will show the allocations for the various funds and and capital? Well, we've already approved the capital, most of the capital things out of ARPA money. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have, I'm going to. You know, that, that, that'll show the amount of the increase. And uh, uh, Do you want to go through the warrant or do you want to look at that? Or we kind of. Well, I, I think it, they sort of go together because some of the things are going to be in warrant items. I'll, yes, I'll, I'll accept. Yeah. Well, we don't want to go through every warrant art article either, though, I thought we said. Yeah, because I think we can do a lot of them in groups. If not, if I'm trying to pull up the copy of the. Uh, um, the yeah, there's the draft. Uh, so what do you want to look at first, I guess? You decide. Let's go warrant. And then when those articles come up, we can pull up. Yeah, the yeah run, runs for the, the warrant. Yeah. OK, and let me just Anything that, we need, that needs to be called attention to. Yeah. All right, I got the budget tool up on my screen. I, I, I suspect Fred is really proud of this budget tool. We've been working on that for like three years now. I right. was going to say, this is like the best Excel spreadsheet ever. All right. So can you see the warrant? Yep. It, it's uh, been yep. three, three years of tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> and every year we find something to tweak. Right. Which is fine. Yep. Um, so... One, two, three, four, um, five are all boilerplate, really authorizations for bank accounts, contracts over three years, um, borrowing to anticipation and reimbursement for grants, uh, those types of things. Um, Article six, our spending limits for our revolving funds. You want me to just keep going? Yeah. Um, Article seven are um, salaries, compensation of elected officers. These are all adjusted by the 3% COLA. Can't believe I'm missing a 3% COLA. Jeepers crow. You could, yeah. you could do it. You could do a write in. No, you do a write in. It's I'll, not I'll, too I'll, late. I'll, I'll, I'll scrimp and save in other places. <laughs> um, Article eight is the enterprise fund budget. I can bring that up if you want. If not, um, I guess we should probably bring it up, huh? Yeah. Um, that's another one that's um, 
I'll that have just, to bring up really quick. Yeah. I was going to say that. What, one just what, is, what is the amount waiting for? What is that contingent on? You've got a placeholder there. Oh, it was just the approval of the of the uh, finance committee. Oh, okay. In the water so that, so, Okay, so you can show us right now what is going to be in that placeholder. Right. Good. Right. Yes, I just got it. I think that's a good form for us to look at the thing we're approving before we approve it. Yeah, but it takes time, you know. <laughs> no. And Jonathan's got to go at eight, right? I, I do have a hard stop at eight, but that's okay. I thought so. Oh, wrong file, of course. I will share this and I'll zoom it in because it's small. This is the enterprise fund budget. This is the budget overview. Um, this is the overview. So the total amount is uh, $407,023. And I'll scroll down. Brian, did you ever get an answer about where the interest on the debt, where the debt service is being paid out of? For the manganese? Yeah. No, no. Yeah. The uh, the hookup the money that had to be borrowed. Um. No, I have not heard from. I have not heard about that. I will, I'll follow up with Wayne. Okay. This, are, these are the overhead costs that are gonna be charged to the enterprise fund that will pay a portion of the general fund expenses. And these are certain percentages that have been predetermined for as, as long as I've been here. There is one big reduction here, and that's in health insurance. That's because one of our one of the two employees um, is switching from a uh, essentially a five plus one plan to a uh, retiree single plan. So um, we charge them direct costs for health insurance. So. There was a reduction there and a similar reduction in our overall health insurance costs, so. Okay. And then this is their projected revenue. This amount includes the 200,000 that they expect to um, collect in hookup fees related to the water merger project. That is that. Okay, but you'll follow up with Wayne on the that borrowing that yep. debt service issue. Yep. So the 407 023 will be Article 8, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, eight. Yeah, I don't. I usually don't put those budgets in there until they're approved, so I don't have to do it. Okay. More than once. Okay, and then Article Nine is the town operating budget, which we just went through. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, can you see mm -hmm. this now? Yeah. Yep. All right. That was Article Eight, the four hundred seven zero two three. Article Nine, as Joyce said, is the operating budget. Um, that'll be inserted in there. Um, Ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen are proposed 
financial transfers. Um, so there's a, uh, an increased amount um, that's being suggested to reduce the tax levy. It's typically 200,000, this time it's 255,000. And I think part of that was to help um, alleviate some of the, the budgets larger than usual um, mm -hmm. in large part due to uh, the frontier assessment. So there was an additional tax relief there. What will that leave us in, in uh, free cash? The, when, Brian, you want to go into the Hurley monies or? I, yep, I got to, I think I need yeah. to sh stop share and then start share, right? With a different program for yeah. some reason. I don't know why I just can't flip, but. So it'll leave us, we're showing the, the 70,000 that's going to be remaining free cash, but there's roughly 108,000 that's temporarily appropriated that be, that will be returned to free cash once the Hurley Heat Park project is done. So there's around 100, let's say 180,000 remaining in free cash. Which is in line with where it's been in the last several years. A little lower, isn't it, Fred? A little lower. No, I think last year was 175. Um, but then it gets certified later and it ends up being a bigger amount because we've collected yeah, no, I get that. in between. I, I get that. But obviously the, the more you go in, the, the, the more you come out. No, I, I think we were right around 175 last year. It a comparable figure to okay. this. Okay. Okay. It so um, twenty thousand dollars into vehicle stabilization, fifty thousand into capital stabilization, seventy thousand into uh, town building stabilization. And I think part of the the reasoning for moving these amounts are it's similar to the amount that the board um, um, approved for purchasing from the uh, CLFRF monies, the capital project. So it's it's really in essence taking some of the money from the the CLFRF and really taking away the expiration date and put it into savings. Um, yeah. In one way, you can be, we can think about it like that, but. Okay. Um, 14, the question for this would be, do we insert the word hybrid? Yes. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Okay. So new hybrid police New cruiser. hybrid police cruiser. Yep. And we don't need to take final votes on these tonight. Um, oh, I'm willing to, to to go page one through six, and I'd like to take kind of a halftime break. Vote to recommend pages one through six, yeah. and then we can go through there, the rest if you want. Or I'm not I, sure. I'm, sorry, go ahead. There's there's some additional changes that are gonna that oh. are gonna happen with the with I think with the zoning amendments at the end. Oh, okay. Um, right. There's different conversations that are happening right now. Um, okay, well, could could we still not approve up through Article 14 now? If that oh, absolutely. Yep. Okay, move we approve up through uh, Article 14 right now, yep. recommended for the select board. P pending the placeholders being filled as as yeah as, as specified as specified. Yeah. Second. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Keep going, Brian. Um, 15 and 16 are enterprise fund retained earning um, articles. So 6,000 for cleaning and inspection of the main uh, water storage tank and $5,000 is their typical annual appropriation into a savings account for their future water department vehicle. Um, 17. Wait, is... Brian, can you go back just one second? Yeah. I thought 16 yeah. said pumping equipment. That's what I wanted to, that's what I was asking about. I was talking about the upgrades to Westbrook. Oh, pump. that is a very good catch. Well, I'll have to change that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so that, not... that will be for a vehicle, not for the pumping station. Yes, to pay for savings. Yeah, yeah. Will the finance committee have to reconsider? Uh, the finance committee voted off the um, 
off the the budget review tool for these. Okay. So they are okay. Budget review tool. Okay. So they actually did not vote to appropriate five thousand dollars for the Westbrook Road pumping station. They voted for the vehicle. Ah uh, yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Understood. Yes. Thank you for catching that. Um, seventeen is uh, proposed money for the retirement obligations of a retiring employee. Um, eighteen is ten thousand dollars it for the continued uh, compliance with the the police reform law. Um, Article nineteen was money that's appropriated proposed for this uh, phase two space needs assessment for the South County Senior Center. Um, 20 is weight we share for the purchase of a new walk-in cooler at Frontier. Uh, 21 is, is our, um, we only have one CPA article this year at the special town meeting this spring. The, mm -hmm. the actual CPA projects were voted on and approved. So this is just the allocations mm -hmm. of the fiscal year 23 revenue into the various um, different categories. And for the first time, well, for the first time in a couple of years, we used to set aside the, you know, we used to set aside 43,000 here for the, the debt service for the town hall and that has been paid off. So that money will now, you know, be available for um, future CPA projects. And it also means that we no longer have debt for that, you know, from that project or on that building. So that's a good thing. Those guys did a good job managing that. Um, this explanation is going to be long. Do you want to do the other ones before? <clears throat> or do we want to get into this one? Just plow ahead, Brian. Yeah, plow. Right. Just do it. All right. So these, this is related to the Hainaville Road reconstruction project. And I'm, I'm not going to say anything that I don't think the board has already heard. Um, there needs to be permanent and temporary easements taken for that project to go forward. So uh, town meeting needs to authorize the select board to acquire those. Um, and it uses some catch on language about purchase, gift, eminent domain, um, those types of things. Obviously there's, we talked about the process before that that mass DOT is gonna have us go through in terms of uh, preliminary letters out to people who will be affected. Um, there'll be offers of appraisal. Um, we'll seek certificates of donations for people who will be willing to you know, donate these, these easements to the town. If not, there'll be appraisals and uh, compensation that, that the town will have to come up with to, to acquire that land. Um, and I'll, I'll put a placeholder in that because I want to talk about um, the highlighted part here, C. Um, yeah. So B talks about our need for special legislation. Um, and we need special legislation for two reasons. Um, one is that some of the art, uh, some of the land that that we need temporary or permanent easements on, and most of it's, I think, all of it's owned by the city of Northampton, is what's called Article Ninety Seven land, and that Article Ninety Seven land is is land that's um, protected for conservation purposes, watershed purposes, those types of things. In this case, waters, you know, water supply purposes. It requires two thirds vote of the state legislature to release land from Article Ninety Seven protection. Um, so we need to petition the legislature for that, for those areas. Um, we also need special legislation. There's a, I believe it's a really small sliver of land that um, is in the town of Hatfield, where the, the town boundaries um, mm -hmm. come together by the reservoir there, um, where if the town were to exercise eminent domain authority over that, it would need special legislation to exercise its eminent domain authority in another town. Um, so I think those would be the two uh, are the, the two types of special legislation that we would need. Special legislation requires authorization from town meeting voters for the select board to do that. That's has, what has been teed up with our legislators yet, Brian? Um, no, this would happen. This would happen sometime after town meeting, but we haven't talked with uh, we haven't talked specifically about it, but Natalie and Joe have been involved in the process. Okay, so they're going to be comfortable with with it. This this isn't going to be something new that they're like, "What are you talking about?" 
I don't think so. Both of them have been involved in, in advocates okay. for this project. Yeah. Um, and the Article 97 process is going to take some time, um, as you can imagine, right? It's going to take town meeting. It's going to take, um, I'm not sure when the legislative session ends. Uh, it, maybe it has already ended or it ends this summer. And maybe it starts up again in January. So, I mean, they're not even going to take this up until, you know. It, it, it may be after the election. And so we may have a different, we will have a different state senator. Right. right. I was going to mention that. So it will, but, but, but they're not, I, I'd be shocked if they took it up during budget season and then, then, the, then the session's over. Right. So it, it, it's a long process. We have time, but we need to get started. Um, the other catch about article 97 is that the state has what's called a no net loss policy for article 97 lands. Um, so essentially if we're taking two acres out of article 97, we need to put two or more acres under article 97 protection. Um, there's different ways we can do that, um, but uh, essentially that's that's gonna be the deal. I've been working with Lynn to try to identify some, some tax title parcels that we have. We do have some that the town has acquired that it's in and around the, the 91 area where some parcels got landlocked um, when that went through. Um, and there's a question, I, we, I wanna have a conversation with the state um, if they will be willing to, some of them are adjacent to, I think, the Great Swamp Wildlife Management Area. So if they would be willing to take those parcels as a donation and Article 97 protect them, then we could, in theory, get money as part of our uh, state-owned land payment to the town that we get each year, which is based on acreage. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it would be through a deed, essentially a deed restriction to ourselves, a deed restriction from the town of Whitley to the town of Whitley on land that's not article 97 protected already um but that's where we have to go that's the the process we have to go through um so it, it'll take some time um but i will definitely get there um so c and i'm not sure that this is something we want to include and that's why it's highlighted we have no idea at this point what the costs are going to be um we don't know what the costs are going to be for, we don't know who we're going to have to pay to, to, to purchase the land. We don't know how many appraisals we're going to need. We don't know the cost of appraisals. Um, and when Keith and I were talking with, with our town council about this, I, I, I think we decided that we're probably going to take out this language about appropriating funds because we really have just don't have any sense at this point um, mm. what, what that right. figure should be. So um, if we need to do that at some point, we do it that a special town meeting. Right. The, the most important part is to start, is to get the authorization so we can start the process that needs to happen. Yeah. Um, and then D is, um, talks about authorizing the select board to enter into agreements um, as may be necessary and appropriate. And one of those may be an agreement with the city of Northampton, which we have to talk to them about. A, a significant number of the, the easements are going to be um, on city of Northampton owned property, watershed property. So if we don't have to appraise, well, I'll make up a number, 30 different parcels um, and pay them for that money. If we could just enter into an agreement saying that, hey, you know, it's in the public interest for them to donate the properties. And um, hopefully that's something that they would consider. It's, in the, it's 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 better for them and it's better for us. Um, so, yeah. any thoughts, Keith? Yeah. No, Brian. I think you covered it all <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. I think it, 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 I was going to ask when like the, the part you highlighted, if this really means we can raise and spend money as we please, or does it mean <laughs> that we have to ask at a subsequent meeting for? whatever appropriations and it sounds like um the second one is the better way to go anyhow is that am i reading you right yeah we would need to do a, a as fred said potentially a special town meeting or um uh, i am pretty positive that this possibility chapter 90 can be used too mm. yeah 
but until we until we start having the negotiations with the property owners and start to come up with a compiled list of who's gonna donate who's not gonna donate things of that nature once we start to see what we need for money then we can go from there okay so probably on this one you're gonna just take away c renumber d into c and it'll more or less read as it says without with part c taken in that would that would be my recommendation yeah okay i don't have any problem with that i've got no problem with that no, that's good okay next one proposed general bylaw amendment this is to reduce the term of the planning board members from five years to three years. This is Why at is the request. Again? What's that? Why is that happening? Um, it from it was it was a request from the planning board, and it I think that their their sentiment is that five years is an awful long time mm. um, to be committed. So they were asking that it be reduced to three years state the state statute allows terms of three or five years for planning board members if that's what they are requesting i've got no problem with it yeah yeah me too yeah that's fine for um our zoning bylaw amendments there were, so there were some changes at the public hearing last night that i that i want to talk about that that still haven't i think been resolved but anyways i'll talk about what i know um 24 they're adding definitions for marijuana courier and marijuana delivery these are um, types of marijuana um, establishments that are now permitted under the state regulations um and there have I, i've received some phone calls people asking about um if the town had uh, regulations or zoning regulations for these types of, of businesses. Um, so, so those there, yeah, including those would mean uh, that they are included in our marijuana bylaw as opposed to anything goes. As opposed to, um, it, in my opinion, it would be that they're not allowed the way that oh. our zoning bylaws. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Twenty six talks is changes to the table of use so. There's a provision in the bylaw that says if it's not listed, then it's not permitted. Um, so there is, they'll, they'll be adding these terms into the table of use in Article 26. Okay. I understand. 20, 25, the planning board has decided to not go through with. Um, it was surrounding the definition of trucking and construction equipment that was um, debated at the special town meeting and was not. Uh, put forward was not put to a vote um i believe it was the fall you mean the planning board hearing because you just said special town meeting oh uh, um board hearing this was at, at our last special town meeting last fall oh. there was an article on the warrant to add this as a definition in a permitted use um and it got tabled at that time i thought so, so was at last year's general town meeting yeah was it the general? Yeah, I think that was um, that's, you're right. It was. Meeting. I was thinking of the other thing that I need to talk about next. But, it was, um, but what was the reason it was tabled? There Lack was of clarity of definition. Of definition. If I yep. And they haven't done any yet. They haven't provided greater clarity since then. Um. So the the person who was I I think most interested in this, um, having this added, um no longer has interest in it. Um, mm. And uh, apparently the the business that it was intended to allow according to the building inspector is allowed anyways. Um, so I believe they found it as just not necessary and just causing more confusion. So so they voted to not, okay. essentially to not ask that it be on the warrant. Okay, okay. The 25 is gone. And then that means that the the table 25 is six. not recommended by the planning board. Okay. Right. It's no longer recommended by right. right. It, it was it was well, it, it doesn't need to go on the warrant, essentially. Right. They're asking that it not be included on the warrant. Okay. Well, yeah, just it, you've got the wording the there board. recommended by the planning board, and it, it's right. all gonna go out. The whole thing will go out, correct. Yep. 
Article 26 will obviously drop the last one in the chart there. Yeah. Um, so this is how marijuana courier and marijuana delivery establishments would be permitted within the town. Um, mm -hmm. Special permit in all the districts um, in all of the non-residential districts. And it keeps it in commercial and industrial zoning. Okay. Yep. Um, one that after the public hearing, which wasn't in in the initial request to me to include articles on the warrant. And this is why I was thinking about last fall special town meeting was, you, you recall there was, um, we debated uh, putting on an article to rezone. It was it was property owned by Wendelowski at the time, and it's immediately to the north of the parcel that is owned by Monahan Trucking. Um, that's owned by Monahan and the trucking mm -hmm. you know, business is there. The parcel immediately to the north, um, we we asked that it be tabled. The town clerk asked that it be tabled because it was a defect in the uh, public hearing notice hmm. um, that was identified. So um, we table the plan of board. The, the town clerk asked to table it, and voters decided to table it at that time. But they held the public hearing on that, so there will be an article um, added here. Um, to request the rezoning of that parcel from um, from its current zoning, which is, I think, AR, it's probably AR1 to commercial. So it's not on here yet because we had conversations all the way through to five o'clock tonight about different things related to zoning. Um, but that's something we can we can vote on when we get the final, I think, the final version. Okay. There's also talk about they're, they're, they've been working on a zoning map for a while. Um, changes to the zoning map. Um, so they may also have something related to that. Um, I didn't learn about that till four o'clock today. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of information on what those actual changes are. Um, I gave them a deadline of, of you know, the warrant needs to close, I think, at the latest, you know, probably May 6th. So we give our town council the weekend and a couple of days to review it before I think the board can sign the, the warrant on May 11th, I hope. So mm -hmm. um, it, it it makes me anxious to think that yeah. we may yeah. be trying something significant within a small amount of time. And I expressed that to them. Um, but yeah. That's that's it. Okay. And you're going to re renumber Article 26 to Article 25 because right. the current 25 is coming out. 26 will go to 25, and then 26 will likely become the window Lasky rezone. Uh, well, it's it's now the the parcel is now known by 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 Monahan. The parcel on State Road rezoning will be Article 26. Yeah. And if there's anything with the zoning map. It'll be Article Twenty Seven. Um, okay. But, okay. Well, and and we'll have those for approval in two weeks. Yeah. If not, then we're not voting on them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I think we should cut, stop it at six, where we well, basically through page six is yep. is got our seal of approval. But there's like various changes on the others, so maybe those can be left till the next meeting. Does that yep. seem like a good way yep. to go? And yeah, really, as long as there's sort of consensus that what we talked about is is yeah. everybody's kind of on the same page, then. All right, so what do we want to do? Do I hear a motion? Well, I think we did. We already did pages one through six. Right. I think uh, we're, I don't think we need a motion to say that we're going to take up pages seven through the end of the next meeting. Right. Okay, so we'll just we'll just plow forward then. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um. Uh, then we're gonna go to. We are going to go to one day liquor license, two hundred fiftieth. Uh, not the two hundred fiftieth wedding anniversary, the two hundred fiftieth anniversary celebration. 
I think that if they if they've gotten all the insurances and everything that's needed, I don't see any reason to not approve that. I agree. If you have any questions, I can give you try to answer them for you. It's just right. it's just molten and wine. Yes. Yep. Okay. Keith, so are we talking about three three events? Yes, it'll be the chicken barbecue, the polka, and the fireman's muster. Yep. So, so Keith, how's that going to work? You're gonna you're gonna um, equipment's going to be provided by a distributor, right? And then Correct. how's the that going to work? A trailer will be provided by the the vendor. And we will have it the you know the entire time. So obviously it will only be open for for sales during those three events. Other than that, it will be um, kept in town. The the product that we use will be billed for, and what is not opened will be returnable after we are all done. Yeah, and you've got a safe place to store it in between, presumably. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a it's a locked, you know. Other than you could break into a liquor store if that you know it, it's as it's as secure as can be. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Cube Thrifty has their ducks in a row. Um, do you know who's going to be dispensing it? We will have the the people, the bartender staff that will be doing it are. Um, uh, what's the word, Jim? Um, surf safe. Surf safe. Yeah. yeah. Tips and surf safe. Tips. Yep, yeah, that's the word I wanted. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I move Correct. we approve the liquor license applications. No second. All those in favor, Fred. Yes. Joyce. Yes. Me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Hannah, MVP. It's me. So he is um, an MVP. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I can share my screen if you'd like to see the application. Um, I just need to be made a co-host first. Um, but in the meantime, I'm looking for approval from the select board to submit the MVP applications pending a couple of clarity and grammatical errors that I noticed while I was looking at the application. Um, one thing that I'd like to note is that I added an educational component working with the Hitchcock Center for the fourth graders at the Waitley Elementary School to make it more of a holistic application. Um, and to make it a little bit more competitive since we're kind of lacking in the environmental justice areas and um, nature-based solutions. So my hope is that that will make it a little bit more appealing for the folks at MVP. Um, let's see, I think I still need to be made a co-host if I'm gonna share my screen and we don't necessarily, I don't need to share the screen if you don't wanna see it. Um, Amy, can I you make Hannah the co-host? I see who's got the power here. I know I'm I'm just a lonely co-host at this point. <laughs> Hang on. Right. I'm on besides, my phone. Besides, I'm, I have to nominate Amy at some point anyway. So that's her penance. <laughs> Amy's not laughing, I bet. I'm trying. Sorry, Amy. Well, I, I've got the documents in front of well, me. I can we've share got, we've got the yeah. documents. Oh, I don't worry. Worry. Okay, great. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, if if somebody else would be willing to share the documents, I mean, really, um, you have what the you application want? in front of you. Yeah. What do you want to see? Um, could I please see the application narrative? Yes. <laughs> we can just have Hannah talk about it. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that too. You can keep going. I read yeah. through it. Even and better. I and I, I didn't know you were from Smith in the ESMP program. Way to go. Yeah, yeah. That's really so nice. We, to probably, be we probably crossed yeah. paths many times before, and I don't even remember. Probably. I should have taken physics while I was there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not too late. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. All right. Um, yeah, so the application, the really big edits that I'd like to make off the top of my head are just changing the task numbers so that they align with the budget narrative. Um, besides <laughs> that, <laughs> wants to see my email. <laughs> um, there are a few edits that I'd like to make for clarity in the um, 
rationale section of the application. Um, and if you have any edits that you would like me to make, I'm more than willing to make those as well. Um, but this is essentially the final draft. Um, I, I thought it was, uh, when I read through it, I thought that was good. It was, I could tell from the comments that you had a few things that you were gonna be um, working on there, but I thought it was complete enough that I, I don't have any problem. Um, I, I looked at it, I, got, I thought it looked good, no I'm, problem. I'm, I think it's great. Awesome. Um, okay. So do we need a motion for that then? Yes, yeah. please. Uh, then I move we authorize Hannah to submit this MVP grant. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yeah. Awesome. OK, thank you. Um, right. Second half of this is One Stop. Um, we received the feedback on our EOIs from One Stop for Growth. Um, they said that our projects were eligible. Um, so with the select board's permission, we'd like to move forward with crafting an application for the exit 35 planning um, study. And then um, we are not going to do um, construction, an application for construction for completing the water main loop because we don't have a shovel ready project. Um, so instead, with your permission, we'd like to apply for um, getting the site preparation and engineering plans ready. Um, to 100% design phase so that they're ready to be applied for in the next grant for construction. That sounds reasonable to me. Yep. Yeah, we met we met with Wayne today to, to talk to him about the project. And I mean, they're very focused on the water merger project right now, understandably. <laughs> yeah. um, and they simply don't have any, it's, it's a concept at this point as to what they would like to do, but no steps have been made towards um, pursuing any engineering plans which we need to apply for the construction grant so yeah we kind of got to back up and okay and, and he was gonna he was gonna meet with an engineer um we asked for uh, uh the cost estimate within the next two weeks i think it was hannah um so i think that's a step to go i think that's the way to go forward and even if we i think it's important to start getting shovel project shovel ready to the extent that we can especially with a lot of infrastructure funding that's going to be you know, flowing out fairly soon, hopefully. Okay. Um, so do we need a motion on that one too? And then I um, yes. move, we make Hannah do that one stop for growth. The two <laughs> projects she discussed, the exit 35 and the um, uh, doing the prep and engineering work to get the water loop um, to be shovel ready. Second. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yep. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Town Administrator comments? Yeah. Um, Christian Lane Culvert Replacement Project. My hopes of rapidly acquiring $2 million to uh, uh, replace the culvert on Christian Lane have pretty much been dashed. Um, mm. We had. Uh, we had proposed it to to, uh, to FERCOG and they had conversations with, with MassDOT um, about that project. And they have concerns about um, whether we can get our design done and design um, up to federal standards that are required. Um, they don't think that we can do that in that amount of time. Um, I, apparently there's differences and I don't understand them all between the federal standards for uh, bridges as opposed to the state uh, standards for bridges that's required for under a chapter 85 review. Um, and the, for a couple other reasons, they don't think we're gonna be able to, to get that ready um, essentially within 12 months to construct. Um, but it still means that the designs going forward will be at 100% design uh, by June 30th of this year. And hopefully we'll be ready again for that outflow of federal uh, infrastructure monies. That project will be shovel ready at that point. It'll need permitting. Well, I guess it needs permitting first and then it'll be shovel ready, but um, we can, it'll essentially be ready to go. Um, okay. So that was disappointing, but um, it was worth a shot. It was a long shot, but um, if they said yes, it would have been pretty, pretty amazing. So, but they didn't, so. Um, hey, no guts, no glory. That's right. Right. Got to swing the bat. Um, construction uh, construction funding, highway. Highway garage design process. So 
Um, I did some research as to the process that we're going to need to, to, to undertake for this. And for those who remember the, the town hall, the town hall process, um, when you have projects that are estimated to cost over $1.5 million, you need to hire what's called um, an OPM or an owner's project manager. Hmm. And that is essentially, so you're essentially hiring an architect to supervise the actual architect that you hire to do the work, um, which is absolutely mind blowing. Two for the price of one. A two for the price of two. <laughs> or two for the price of three. Architects right. had a great lobby that day. Um, so, so, so we need to do that. Um, we need to solicit for an owner's project manager. And we also have to do what's called a designer selection process to hire the actual architect. So we need to form a designer selection committee. Um, and that's even before we start one, even that's before we even put one mark on a paper in terms of design. Um, so that's the, that's the process that we would have to start when we want to move forward down this road. Um, I can try to find out what OPM costs are. Um, any project over 1.5 million. So I'm sure surrounding towns have an idea or have experienced what those costs are. Well, I'll try to get those next. Um, but that's gonna be a cost. Crazy in my mind, but anyways, yeah. um, it, it, that's what the law says. And then we'll have whatever the costs are that uh, an architect comes back with for mm -hmm. doing the actual design. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the road forward whenever the board wants to move that forward. Um, do we intend to do a needs assessment before we even get into design? Like, what do we want in this building before we ask someone to say where, you know, how it's going to be built? We, I would say that we can start that. However, we also need to bring in the, the, the expertise in regards to what they're going to say building codes are going to require. You know, it's it's one thing to say we need this, but building code may say no, that's not good enough. It's got to be something different. For instance, like yep. wash bays and things like that. There's going to be a lot of things that that are stipulated by building codes. Now, I, I'm just thinking it's not even a need to say so much as a want assessment. You know, and Keith, that you would be driving most of this. You know, we'd like five bays or six bays at you know with you know, at least 15 foot doors or whatever clearance, you know, and depth, you know, think that the sort of minimum requirements of what the uh, physical components are before, before we even get to what the details of wash bays and all the rest. You know, a lot of that will be added later as requirements, but sort of figuring out, okay, where might we want to put this? Will you know? Will what we want fit there? Right. And you know what are the, you know, an office space or a staff room or, you know, of certain size. I'm I'm just saying very general layout of what we want in the building. Yeah, and I guess at the same time it can be really clear about why. Is you got to start making the case for why it's needed, um, and I I don't doubt that it is needed. Um, if if for nothing else, we'll be able to get highway equipment that isn't like the sub miniature kind. Um, and plus, we'll get it. Keith will have a clean office. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. his own office maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So just just a, a general sort of outline of what we would like to see in this building before we hire an architect to fit it all within four walls. Right. Right. Because we don't want the we don't want the architect to 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 drive the what we want in here because then you know that will be yeah. a right. growing project. Yeah. And it, it, my hope would I guess my hope and expectation would be that part of the part of the 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 RFQ that goes out for designers would would have some stipulations about you know, experience designing highway garages within the past 
however we want to write it within the past right. five years, 10 years and in things like that, so that we don't have somebody who's, I have nothing against museums, but somebody who strictly does museums and then tries to do a highway garage. Yeah, so I think we just need to be able to tell whoever it is what we want, you know, what right. we want. Yep. And, and, rather than having them tell us, here's what you can have. Right. And, and we also want to avoid excess. Um, we want right. to make sure that we, we get what we want, but we don't get what we don't need. Um, I can think of highway garages in our immediate area that are probably a little bit more excessive <laughs> than, than need to be. Oh, I can't think of any, but okay. I was going to say, not, I, I can't think of any of I mean, I, I know they exist, but I just can't remember which one. Oh, uh, yeah, all this general direction. <laughs> I can't remember that right now. You're all running right. for office somewhere else. <laughs> no, not uh, all right. Uh, um, uh, I'll mention this on Hannah's behalf. She did a great job, submitted the Green Communities Grant. Um, that's for weatherization at the uh, Waitley Elementary School. And again, that's really a necessary step, uh, at least under the Green Communities Program, that weatherization has to be done first, and then hopefully we can address some of the other issues with the mechanicals. The boilers are about, oh, 30 something years old. Um, so there's, there's other issues and, and opportunities for energy efficiency and, and hopefully better options in it. Old and just gas as a note, fr Frontiers boilers are about the same age and starting to go now. Yeah. So um, hopefully it can hold off another year, uh, another year plus, but hopefully we'll, we'll find out. And it, it's things like that, which is so much money is being put into the building stabilization fund, knowing that things like boilers for the school are coming down the line. Yeah. yeah. Um, floodplain bylaw, um, that's something that the planning board's been working on for a while now. Um, and they were, they had a public information session. Hannah could probably speak more about this than I, or she can correct me when yeah. I say something wrong. But there were a lot of questions about the interaction of the floodplain bylaw with, um, essentially agricultural activities and the agricultural exemption that exists in chapter 40A that nobody was really able to answer, even their contact at the state, um, who was yeah. working with them. To, to, to move this along, didn't have answers. Um, it's one of those things where any municipality and all municipalities who want to remain in, in the flood insurance rate, uh, flood insurance, the firm, flood insurance mm -hmm. rate, whatever that, whatever M stands for, um, whoever wants to offer flood insurance in their town um, needs to have an updated bylaw. Uh, I think it, the deadline got pushed again. Um, so it's not as pressing. Mm. And we also need to have an updated floodplain bylaw to be eligible for FEMA grants, as I understand it. So um, there's incentives for us to do it. Um, but those questions need to be answered. And I was going to rant about how it would be nice if this was sort of decided that the state, the issue was resolved at sort of the statewide level. So we could all just sort of move forward together. But again, everybody has to piecemeal it together like mm. so many other things. And I'll stop there. Um, mm -hmm. Before that's, I'll stop my rant there. Um, uh, the last thing, water merger project that work has uh, resumed at the site there. Um, I know there was concrete up there, or cement doing something. Uh, I think Keith was up there, um, but so that's that's back to uh, active construction up there. So um, that's all I have. No unanticipated items. I would move we adjourn, sir. I will second. I would uh, ask Joyce to vote. Aye. Fred? Yes. Me, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Jimmy, Yay. I will say.